The Illinois Federation of Teachers was formed because teachers knew they needed a union. In Chicago, teachers and education secretaries came together to join the American Federation of Teachers. In Benalde, Illinois, the Macoupin County Federation of Teachers negotiated what is believed to be the first collective bargaining agreement for teachers in the United States. My name is Ed Sirocco and uh, my uncle Joe was one of the founders of the union in Benalde in 1938. Well, when we were on strike in 1980, we talked to some of the other teachers on the picket line at the time, and they, they talked about basically about how poor conditions were. Like my dad said, they were paid in vouchers, which there wasn't a guarantee they were going to get paid on. So if they got a voucher and you couldn't find somebody to cash it, you were just out it. There was no benefits as far as health benefits. There were no, uh, no guarantees that you were going to get a job the next year. There was no insurance. Uh, there was no, uh, there was no IFT protection. If they got sued by somebody or if somebody complained about you, that was too bad. The Illinois State Federation of Teachers received its charter and held the first convention in 1937. Delegates approved an annual budget of $1,310. As the teacher union movement grew, so did the IFT. In 1944, the IFT had the largest membership in the AFT. In 1957, teachers in East St. Louis held the nation's first bargaining election. Collective begging took place rather than collective bargaining. And a number of us, uh, at least 25 out of the seven or 800 teachers that existed there, decided that we were either going to improve the situation or we were going to lose our jobs, and either way, our individual situation would be better. Um, so we decided to use the only means most of us knew, which was that you held an election to determine the bargaining agent. And we found that just because we had the right to talk didn't mean that they were going, going to talk. And therefore, for anything meaningful to happen, after all of the attempts to peaceably get the board to the table, uh, we had to strike. We had people uh, shot at. Um, we had people who were run over on the picket line by automobiles and hospitalized. Uh, I had my house sprayed with automatic gunfire. Um, there were a lot of things that happened that were not pretty. Uh, and the teachers, uh, God bless them, had a lot of courage and stood up to that. As the IFT grew, it spread beyond elementary and secondary education. In 1966, college clerical and technical personnel joined the IFT to help them fight for their rights in the workplace. The employees at that time were organizing um, side by side along with the faculty union. And it was the employees' wish that they would have a bargaining unit which would encompass the employees in higher education which were known as the classified staff. The original idea behind the bargaining unit was so that they could secure fair wages, equal opportunity for employment, better working conditions, and also to be recognized as an equal partner with management. I find that the Illinois Federation of Teachers is the main source of organizing our paraprofessional and school related personnel. These are the people that you don't really see often or hear about often. They're behind the scenes, but they're the ones who are in most need of organizing because they usually make minimal wage and have a difficulty getting any kind of benefits. So the IFT has been like a godsend. After higher education faculty lost a strike in 1968, they regrouped and came back in 1976 to form the University Professionals of Illinois representing faculty at the Board of Governors Universities. We learned a couple of things from the strike. One was, uh, of 68, one was that we had to stay together and that just because we lost the strike it didn't mean that uh, we would fade away and, 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 and hide. The strike in many ways is very successful because it taught us to stick together and also taught us the need for a statewide organization. And by talking to the other uh, campuses in the Board of Governors system, we were able to mount a much stronger uh, um, political group to deal, with, uh, to deal with not just the Board of Governors, but also with the Governor's Office. Tough battles were at the heart of many great IFT victories. 
Fighting the good fight required members to stand up for their rights and face retribution that could affect their career and family. In 1970, Norm Swenson served a 30-day jail sentence for his role in the Cook County College Teachers Union strike. It was uh, terrifying at first, uh, needless to say. It's an entirely different experience. So it was groundbreaking. We were asserting fundamental rights that we believed in. That is, uh, that we weren't slaves, that we had the right to a contract and the right to bargain. Just nine days after Swenson began serving his sentence, Five leaders of the Kankakee Federation of Teachers began 60-day sentences for leading a strike in 1969. The only thing that made it worthwhile at all was, was the fact that, that uh, we, first we knew we were right. And uh, then again, uh, we were struggling for uh, credibility as a union. And we were struggling also, I think, for the right to strike. I think I told you that uh, we were in a classroom teaching democracy, and the teachers in Illinois couldn't participate in that democracy. We didn't have the right to strike. Large groups of teachers were targeted as well. In Niles, the school board refused to bargain with the union, leaving them no choice but to strike. The board tried to break the union at a special meeting. As teachers' names were called, they came forward to face the board before a vote was taken to fire that teacher. The board fired all 267 teachers on strike. The next day, the teachers held a meeting. The teachers uh, sp spilled their guts, talked about what it meant to them to teach, what it would mean to lose their career because uh, being fired for a person who's got 10 or 12 or 15 years of experience essentially is the end of the career. You're not going to find another job. Uh, and how important it was for them to stick together and how necessary it was to win this fight for a decent contract because uh, teaching here without a union contract would be misery itself. Um, I'm very proud to say that not a single person in that group of 267 teachers um, went across the picket line and asked for the job back. And uh, starting about midnight on Wednesday, the board began bargaining in earnest and by 6.30 in the morning, with the assistance of our field staff person, Chuck Burdeen, we'd hammered out a contract that we were all proud of, and the strike was over. There was an article in the Tribune about four months ago about people being unhappy with their jobs because they weren't doing significant things and because they had no control. And I, just coming off of a strike this last fall, was thinking, I have both. I'm doing what I want. And nobody can push us around. In 1971, the IFT serviced members from one small office in Springfield. But newly elected President Robert Healy had a plan to make the IFT truly a statewide organization. I think that getting over that early disunity and then putting the restructuring of the IFT together so that we were organized uh, more or less the way the AFT was organized and getting rid of the animosity between Chicago and downstate then working in the legislature on a collective bargaining bill in 83 uh, those were real key times in the development of the IFT during this time of reorganization and growth, small groups banded together to form larger federated locals, a concept originated by the IFT. When you federate and you take a number of small locals and put them um, together like this, um, obviously you can provide office space. Um, you can uh, perhaps even have um, elected leaders that are uh, part-time or, or full-time people who are um, in closer contact with members than other staffers are. And you have, a, I think, just a better feeling uh, for what's going on within each one of the councils that you have. And it just gives you a sense of largeness, uh, yet preserves, I think, your autonomy, even though you may be a small uh, number within that, uh, within that federated local.